Today I want to talk about why ICF should be used for passive house and net zero homes. So I'm Cody with Up to Code. I'm a huge ICF fan. Now there's been some data that's come out recently and I just want to talk a few points, maybe just even have a little bit of a healthy debate as to why ICF should be used for passive house and net zero rather than just simply taking a wood frame building and just making it overly complicated or adding a whole bunch of extra lumber and materials to a wall where an already existing system is just so effective that you, it, it's, I think it's just so overlooked because the simplicity of an ICF system just seems to be go over top of everyone's heads. So let's jump into it. So I want to talk about a, a test that was done, I believe in 2016 by the CLEB, so that's C-L-E-B Laboratories in Quebec. So what they did, now this is actually, I have a note that I'll include in this video from Coaches and Engineering, they're from Ontario, and they actually helped me develop this letter and kind of give a summary of what the test was about. And in a gist is, most people, most, um, I guess, data, when you're calculating energy efficiency of a building, they just use R value. They don't actually use thermal mass and how thermal mass can improve the efficiency of a building. And that's one of the major things to an ICF wall assembly. So in a nutshell, what they did is they had a warm side to a wall and a cold side to the wall. They had a two by six wall versus an ICF wall. So the two by six was R20 and the ICF wall was R22. They had minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit on one side plus 70 on the other side. In summary, what the test results showed is, okay, from the cold side, the cold actually transferred through the two by six wall and affected the warm side and basically made the thermostat turn on to call for heat after two hours. So that was on the two by six wall. Now on the ICF wall, it actually took 48 hours for the cold side to transfer through the wall and affect the interior temperature on the warm side enough to call for heat and turn the thermostat on. So that's 48 hours difference. So when guys are calculating and thinking, oh, it's, they're just focusing strictly on R value. R value is, let's say this foam insulation, is just a resistor. So it's resisting and slowing down the transfer of cold through here versus the warm side. So you're always gonna have a temperature difference, doesn't matter if it's a warm climate or a cold climate. And insulation is just a resistor that slows that transfer down. Whereas the concrete core is actually a capacitor. It actually is gonna store that energy. It, it has to change the temperature of this whole entire lump sum, this, all this mass. It's gonna transfer through here, change the temperature of all this mass, and then transfer through here before it gets to the interior side. So in a climate like similar to Canada, we could be hot during the day, but cold in the morning and night. So you really don't actually ever get that transfer through the wall. Cause if it takes 48 hours to go through, well, it's cold in the morning and then it gets hot and then cool and then hot and then cool. So your HVAC system doesn't really ever get affected. And it's just that much more efficiency. So when you read the letter, an ICF wall is 60% more efficient than a two by six wall, even though at first glance, they're similar in R value. So the other thing that I wanna mention is it is so easy to achieve the air tightness factor that Passive House would set out. So they would call for um, a 0.6 air exchange per hour. That's one of their specs. It's so easy to achieve that with ICF versus a wood frame. We've done it in the past twice. We have videos on that where the one house, we actually, we took some really care and attention to detail. We didn't actually ever expect to do a blower door test to see how airtight it was. We just wanted to do a good job. Then after the house is all finished, we tested it and we came in at a 0.23 air exchange per hour. So the passive spec is 0.6 and we achieved that almost by threefold. That's how airtight the ICF was because 
because of this concrete core and everything else, I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, we did another house where we tested, we're actually, we had built it four years prior. So while we were testing the most recent home with the 0.23 ACH, we, I called the homeowner and I said, hey, can we test your house while we're in the neighborhood? And yeah, sure, of course. So we hooked up the blower door test. We did it really quick. We have proof and data on this, but that house was a 0.42 ACH, four years old, and we didn't, even, we didn't even try to achieve that. So that's just to show that ICF is so airtight, you don't have to be so particular and detailed with every single thing that you do. You don't have to worry about micromanaging every single sub trade, because if they make a tiny little mistake, you could just totally blow your air tightness out of the window, right? So that's what's nice about ICF. You can achieve that so easily, because really all you have to worry about is your ceiling. And that's the only detail that really could be messed up because you have a vapor barrier against the truss. A couple other things. Now I just, we have some videos um, on ways to add insulation value to an ICF wall. There's a whole multitude of ways that you can add R value to an ICF system and you still don't, it's basically, I guess you gotta watch the video. You can just buy a wider wall cavity and insert different thicknesses of foam, move the concrete closer to the inside, move the thermal mass to the inside, and then you can still have those higher R values but you don't need to add insulation and then add strapping so that you can drywall to it because what you would do is no matter if you want to add insulation to the ICF, you always have these snap ties that you can screw to. So that's for exterior or for interior. So if you just thicken the wall and add inserts to the interior, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything. You're just simply adding R value. It's cheap and easy to do. There's also another thing to consider is a one-sided ICF system, something similar to this, where you have foam on one side, you're, you're, you get full usage of the thermal mass on the interior side. Now for passive or even net zero, this could be a north facing wall or a northern wall. This over here could be your southern wall. And as the sun comes through, it could just heat up this mass all day long and then at night when it cools down, this can release that heat back into the house overnight. Now, same thing, I shot a video specifically on this is how to add R value to a one-sided ICF system. There's a ton of ways to do it. Same thing is you just thicken the wall out, add inserts and sleeves, and you don't ever have to change the exterior and how you attach things simply to the outside. So make sure to watch those videos where I dive into all the options available for that. Now, at the end of the day, I know for a fact that I could build a passive or a net zero ICF house with a lot less steps, easier to do, uh, way less detail and way less chance of messing it up than if anyone else would do with a wood frame. So an ICF is just easier all around, better, you have better R value and you get use of the thermal mass. So with, this, with that, I hope I've sparked a new conversation, maybe some new ideas. And until next time, thanks.